All right, folks, the next and final installment in Daniel Craig's run as James Bond has released No Time to Die. Let's talk about it. All right, folks, uh, if you know me, you know I'm a Bond fan. I absolutely love James Bond. Uh, I love Daniel Craig as James Bond. I will do a Craig-era Bond ranking uh, of all of his films, and I have a lot to cover, so let's jump right into it. To start, I will say uh, The Gun Barrel. Didn't love it. I didn't love The Gun Barrel. Uh, they do try to do something new and original, and I do like how it goes into the scene. But the design itself, the fact that there's no blood, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the Craig era in general, I mean, again, this does seem like a nitpick to probably any casual viewer, but to a James Bond fan, it is a staple of the franchise. Uh, and the Craig era in general has not been great about the gun barrels. Uh, you know, they're trying to be inventive. Casino Royale is a good one. Quantum of Solace and Skyfall, neither of them put theirs at the beginning of the film. And Spectres is just okay, and it's the only one that uh, even tries to be remotely like the rest of the franchise. I'm spending a lot of time on this, I think probably a little too much, uh, but I didn't love the gun barrel. But my enjoyment was not soured uh, whatsoever, and even if it would have been, you know, it wasn't for long, because the pre-title sequence is phenomenal. You get the part with Safin at the ice in, uh, in Norway, brilliant brilliant stuff using horror elements and then you know you get the stuff in Italy uh, with Bond and Madeline and it's just brilliant non-stop action it feels like a really long one you know I'm not sure if this set some kind of record or something uh, for for lengthy title sequences in the franchise uh, but I thought it was absolutely phenomenal and really sets the stage for the rest of the film and then I will say I do enjoy uh, Billie Eilish's Bond song I'm not a huge fan of her music in general uh, but I enjoy the Bond song and I think it works well with the film uh, the plot of the film was really completely ridiculous. It's sort of uh, the rest of the Craig films try to be grounded, and this one really doesn't even attempt it. And I'm fine with that. I, I think, it, you know, maybe just doing the same old gritty stuff doesn't, it wouldn't have benefited uh, the final Craig outing. And I appreciate, you know, the more ridiculous world massive threat ending. Uh, and I, it reminds me just how, how much I do think that still works in the modern era. You know, I am glad films like Casino Royale exist, which uh, definitely transitioned Bond from a more goofy gadget oriented guy to a, a you know, modern take on a, a, a spy. But uh, no time to die proves that even classic Bond could still work. Folks, I was going to do a character ranking and talk about it there, but I think I might just address uh, generally most of the characters in this section. Uh, you have the crew, Money Penny and Q are basically the same, you know, they're on point. Uh, Money Penny maybe doesn't get as many lines with Bond in this one, it's whatever, you know, it's a long film. Uh, they got a lot to cover. Q is pretty good in this one, uh, same old shtick between them, they've got great, you know, chemistry, Daniel Craig and Ben Wishaw. Uh, M, I do have a problem with, I have a problem with M because I think they play him kind of as an idiot, you know, he's super confrontational and I get that. Uh, for the first time around, and then they do let up on that really easily, just super quickly. Uh, but also, why on earth would, would he authorize a program like this in the first place? Heracles uh, just seems completely idiotic, and for his excuse to be, you know, we never thought it would fall into the wrong hands, uh, is ridiculous. Madeline Swan is, of course, uh, I think an all-timer Bond girl now, especially after this one. She's you know, the only Bond girl to go into two films and really be given a fleshed out, you know, character arc. Uh, and I think, she, you know, she was an excellent inspector. She didn't really leave a great mark. Here, she's phenomenal. You've got the villains. Uh, Safin, I actually really like, you know, I will, you know, his motivations. I think I'll touch on that later, but uh, they're not all there. And that's probably my main complaint of the film, but he's still very intimidating, played perfectly. Uh, by Rami Malek and the character design is just great. You've got Logan Nash who is you know a fun sort of side villain. Felix Leiter of course uh, bows out in this film unfortunately uh, but it was a good ending to it you know Jeffrey Wright played him spectacularly as always. I really like this iteration of Felix. Um, uh, you got uh, Dr. Obrushev who I don't I mean pretty indifferent on he's not great he's not horrible he's a very, you know comedic character entirely. The new 007 
uh, we almost forgot to touch on, played by Lashana Lynch. I liked her. I think her chemistry with Bond was great. Her character does exactly what it needs to be. It's not particularly overbearing, like you know, I think many were afraid of, including myself. Uh, but uh, yeah, they don't go too much into that out with the old and with the new uh, trope, and they let it run its course, and they don't let it overstay its welcome. And then, of course, the titular character, the one everyone is coming to see the movie for, James Bond himself. Uh, and people have mentioned rightfully that Daniel Craig just plays a completely different version of James Bond in this film. Feels really nothing uh, like any of the other iterations. Spectre maybe a little bit, but uh, he's just, you know, he's, he's having the time of his life here. And I will say, it's not my favorite of his performances. I think he's absolutely excellent, knocks it out of the park. Uh, the best actor to play Bond, the best Bond, will probably, I don't think he'll ever be beaten as Bond in my mind. Uh, I, I'd be very shocked if someone could just touch the legacy that he's created with this character, completely revolutionized it. Uh, but this film doesn't have my favorite performance from him. Again, not bad, didn't dislike it, just not my favorite. Again, this is something for the more uh, the, the you know Bond fans, but this film really you know, had a lot of homages to uh, On Her Majesty's Secret Service. You've got the All the Time in the World, obviously, which was just brilliant. I loved it both times at the beginning and the end, uh, as well as the score coming in in one particular scene. And I, you know, I think the reason is because, like in that film, Bond, you know, meets his love. And I think maybe they were trying to get, you know, throw you off, think that Madeline might die when in reality it's the other way around. Uh, but I really appreciated those homages to an earlier entry in the franchise. They weren't particularly overbearing. They were just really nice touches, really nice, sweet touches. Let's talk about uh, the Cuba scene. I mean, everybody loves it. It's not my favorite part of the movie, which it seems to be for a lot of people, but it's just great. It's classic Bond, it's so fun. Uh, the dynamic there is great, the vibe is great. Anna de Armas is absolutely excellent as, uh, as Paloma. Uh, it's just such a great sequence. What more could you ask for? Love Cuba. And then, you know, you get a bit of a interrogation scene with Blofeld, uh, and he's not great. Yeah, you know, I really, I used to be a defender of Spectre, I really liked it, I watched it. The, the first Bond movie I ever saw in theaters was Spectre, and then uh, I watched it again last year on my rewatch, and I liked it both times quite a bit, and then I watched it again this rewatch, and uh, a lot worse than I remember, and Blofeld is definitely not a great villain, I used to think pretty highly of him at least this iteration of Blofeld, uh, and he doesn't do much to change that in this film. Super boring. And then, uh, you know, I know some, I've seen, not a lot actually, not as much as I might have thought, but a lot of, uh, again, not a lot, some criticism about Bond having a daughter. I think it was an excellent choice. The film needed to take risks, do something new, uh, and I think it adds some characterization to Bond that, uh, of course, no other film would even attempt. And then I will just say that I absolutely love the finale, both the setting, I mean the base is just phenomenal, the stakes are there, they're high. Again, I, I think I'll talk about Safin's motivation now, which is my main complaint of the film because uh, he doesn't have one. What is his motivation for killing millions of people? Uh, never explored, never a line dedicated to it, he doesn't seem to be just that crazy that he's willing to do that for no reason. Uh, but. I guess when you need the, the stakes, the scale that the film is on, you kind of got to just shoehorn it in. So I wish maybe we'd gotten a line or two, uh, even if it's ridiculous, just give me a line about why he wants to do this to prove a point or something like that. Just give me something. Uh, but that, that was my only complaint. I mean, not only complaint, just, you know, the main one. And then I will say, uh, Safin and Bond have a, a dialogue and uh, it's a bit odd. Maybe it's just me. It's like the one scene in the film that just kind of takes me out because it, it seems like the lines are just shoehorned in there. Uh, and it just feels weird the way they're going at it with each other. And this, you can see sort of, uh, again, not complaints. I didn't dislike his performance, but Craig in this scene is just, uh, I, don't, I don't love necessarily what he's doing. It doesn't necessarily feel like the bond that's been built up this whole time. Again, nitpicks didn't decrease my enjoyment whatsoever. I still love his performance. I still love Bond. I still love his bond. Uh, I still love the scene, but uh, that's like the my least favorite scene of the film is their conversation just because it, it, it takes me out. There's something about it. The dialogue is just off. Folks, you know, and going into a Bond film, just a few staples pretty much all the time. The action will be great. The sound design will be great. The 
goddamn production design. My god, is it amazing. Visual effects in this one are just spectacular. Did I say sound? I think I said sound. Score, uh, of course, Hans Zimmer, who's just a goat. I mean, let's be real. What a, what a magnificent composer. An all-time great uh, composer. The staples of Bond are all here, and they're all great. And then, folks, I will just say, I will touch on what everybody, uh, the conversation around this film has been, and it's the ending. It's that Bond would die. Is it predictable? Yes. We all saw it coming. Pretty much everybody saw it coming. Uh, but I don't think that diminishes its uh, its impact. I like that it took the risk. I really would have been disappointed, perhaps, if they hadn't. I don't want to say that explicitly, because I'm sure there's a way they could have taken it. It would have been interesting. But uh, when, you, when you reboot the franchise with Craig like that, when you take a risk like that, you got to end it on a risk. you got to end it on something it will be remembered for, uh, a great thing to close out on. And they did just that. They gave him a logical reason as to why he has to die. And uh, they made it happen. Bye-bye, Bond. Yeah, with the old and with the new. We are getting a new Bond. The Bond will continue, in case you didn't stay to the credits. There's a, it literally says James Bond will return. I expect another reboot. Uh, actually, let's get into that for a bit. Firstly, uh, I do want to just say I love this film. I absolutely love this film. I won't share where I would put it in my Craig ranking just because I do want to do a Craig ranked video. Uh, but adored it. Absolutely loved it. Small nitpicks, really small nitpicks. A great film. Great Bond film. An A. Easy A. I will go ahead and tell you that this is my favorite film of the year. I absolutely adored it. If it doesn't sound like I have enough enthusiasm, I might have had more. This is 11 p.m. Uh, on Wednesday night, and I have just been feeling under the weather recently, but I absolutely adored this film. I saw it twice. Uh, I hope to own it. I hope to watch it more times in the future, and I think it is an amazing film. Loved it. Okay, and then this is what I actually am interested in touching on, and I'd love to hear uh, your guys' thoughts in the comments below, and it's how they will continue the franchise. Now, uh, they can't really stay in this universe that they built up because you don't have Bond. I mean, you kind of need James Bond. And don't give me he's a code name. No. Okay. This universe is done. They can reboot, which will be tough. They will be draw complaints to Casino Royale, which is undoubtedly the greatest Bond film. Uh, and will never be beaten, likely. So uh, I think that would be, you know, maybe not the best decision to start over saying, you know, here's a new Bond. Here's him getting his two kills to get double O status. Uh... I, I'm not sure how well that would go just because it is so reminiscent of Casino Royale unless they do it in a completely different tone and style and again I'm not sure how that would go uh, I don't think that's a good idea I thought about this a bit I would not be opposed to them remaking changing a lot of elements but remaking a classic Bond film uh, like Goldfinger like from Russia with Love, with a new actor, just as their first entry, to ease them into it a bit. You can still have him already established as Bond uh, in this new film so that you don't have to go with the whole introduction again like they did in Casino Royale. You're still rebooting the franchise. This is still a different Bond, slightly experienced, I would say, just so you can build up more and more films after that. Uh, just plop them into a pre-existing story, change up quite a bit, again, get a new director, get a new writer, you know, obviously new, I mean, what, 50 years ago, so, anyway, get a new writer, new director, add, get them to add some spice into it that you uh, haven't seen before, and then carry on with this franchise from there with all original stories. I, I like that idea personally. I'm partial to that idea. I am excited to see what they do. I'm excited to see who they go with as Bond, uh, as far as predictions go. I would say throw all of yours out because they will definitely go with somebody you've either never heard of or is very small. Uh, but I will say, just toss the hat in the ring. For Richard Madden, who is kind of you know a known name, he's my number one pick, I think. Just great. I think he would absolutely rock it. Uh, and then uh, Kingsley ben from One Night Miami, one of my favorite films of this year, one of the best performances I've seen this year. He won the Bob Ceremony for Best Actor, by the way. If you want to check that out, that's up there. A little... Uh, Oscar reminiscent ceremony I put on with this guy right here. Uh, I think he would be a great Bond as well. I'd be excited to see either of them. I think Kingsley ben is definitely a lesser known name, so not completely out of the running. Uh, but I'm excited to see what they do with Bond's future now that Craig's era is done. I'm not sure he'll ever be topped. I'm not sure his films will ever be topped. Uh, but I'd like to see them try.
All right, folks, I've been EDP Reviews. You've been amazing, and I will see you when the next Bond comes out. Bye-bye.